if someone wanted to know about NPI, which is the Neurologic Pupil Index. And basically measuring the pupil reactivity is not a new thing in neuroophthalmology. The new thing about the NPI is that it's automated. So a machine can provide an automated quantitative assessment of pupillary reactivity, quantitative. And um, so it's a scale from zero to five and anything above three is normal. And what you're doing is having a machine to measure the pupil reaction. And so in neurologic disorders, an impaired pupillary reaction is sometimes a sign that they use in the NICU, Neurologic Intensive Care Unit. And that's why they generally don't let us dilate patients in the ICU because what they're looking for is anisocoria and a less reactive pupil. And that pupil is called the Hutchinson pupil, Hutchinson. So if you have an intracranial process, let's say a hemispheric lesion, edema, epidural hematoma, stroke with edema, blood clot, it can cause mass effect and shift. That shift can push the brain and the brain stem. And so compression of the cranial nerve number three as it's crossing the tentorium can be from an intracranial lesion, from increased intracranial pressure, mass effect shift, herniation, and that herniation produces an anisocoria, the Hutchinson pupil. Normally, you can see the Hutchinson pupil without a machine because the anisocoria is what's the thing that's the sign. But pupil reactivity by itself can predict intracranial lesions, edema, etc. The problem with doing it manually or with a machine automated is so many things cause your pupil to have less reactivity. And so the reactivity itself can be impacted by drugs. A lot of the drugs that they're on in the unit can make their pupil smaller. The pain medicines, the opioids. So a lot of people just have small and poorly reactive pupils. It doesn't tell you anything about what's in their brain because it's pharmacologic. And anisocoria is actually a better measure for the thing you're really worried about, shift, edema, the Hutchinson pupil. And so I think it's interesting that we have machines that can measure pupil reactivity, but the specificity of the finding for detecting an intracranial lesion is not that great. But if it is abnormal, especially if it's anisocoria, it just tells you something is wrong. It doesn't tell you what is wrong. And so it might be useful to say, okay, we need to image this person, but if you already have a cause, then the reactivity by itself is not helpful, but the Hutchinson pupil and anisocoria is useful.